Chances are, if you're a smartphone user, at some stage, you will have gotten a push notification. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you how push notifications work. We're gonna take a peek behind the scenes, and I'm gonna show you the benefits of implementing them in your mobile strategy. Let's jump in. So what is a push notification? Basically, a push notification is an alert that pops up on your smartphone that prompts you to do something, that calls you to action. It allows you to speak directly to app users at the right time and at the right place. It's very immediate and it's hard to ignore. With great power comes great, great responsibility as well. So we're gonna be looking at the right way to push and the wrong way to push a little bit later. There's a couple of different styles that you need to know about with push notifications. So first of all, you've got that like default style, which is just the text. Maybe there is you know, a merge tag, you've got their first name, you might have an emoji in there as well, but it's basically information, it's an update, it's a promotion, and then they tap that, and then it deep links to part of the app. Maybe you're gonna show a Pulsate news feed card or something like this, uh, but essentially it's not interactive in any way. You tap it and you go to that place, it's like a static, push notification. The second type is an interactive push. And this means that you can allow users to respond directly from the interface of the push without opening up your mobile app. So as an example, that could mean that you wanna ask customers, will, will you be attending the event tonight? Yes or no, you can get an RSVP. Are you interested in X or Y? Would you like to order the uh, Chicken Alaska uh, for lunch today? Yes or no, and you can click and collect. Um, so you can have this as an interface, which is very rich and it's very immediate and customers don't have to open up the app to respond and you're getting like a micro interaction out of customers. In terms of the types of content that you might wanna push through a push channel, well, first of all, there's like utility type stuff. So if your app is a to-do list app, it might be a reminder to complete that to-do. If it's a timer, you might use a push notification to let people know the timer is up. Maybe if you're a bank, you might do an update. You might let someone know that the, they've had a, a credit to their current account and the value uh, of that credit. So you're giving them an update. Maybe you're uh, an airline. You wanna let them know that a flight has been delay delayed. So these are very functional uses of the push notification system. And these are the things that customers find most valuable. Utility and getting contextual updates. Yes, push notifications are used and often abused for promotional um, stuff. And yes, you can uh, do some promotions uh, in your push notification tool, um, but you wanna keep it to a minimum because you can fatigue customers at a certain level. If you are doing promotions, make sure they're heavily segmented heavily personalized and you're also tracking uninstalls of the app following each promotional campaign that you send out so you know which campaigns are winning uh, later on in the funnel and which ones users are just opting out. They're saying, get me out of here, no more promotional stuff. So yes, uh, utility and updates are the best type of push notifications to get and are probably the reasons people opted in to get that stuff. Uh, you won't find too many users that are like, yes, I just want you to send me promos and push notifications. So more of this, less of this, but we do understand that there is a time and place in this. So how do push notifications actually work? So we've prepared a little bit of a diagram for today. Um, so first of all, we have the, um, the various operating systems, push notification services or servers, and they do the job directly of connecting to all your smartphones out there and sending those helpful, uh, sometimes maybe annoying uh, push notifications. So we've got this system here. You also need the user to install your app. So you can't blast people. Uh, they need to have the app installed on their device and they also need to opt in. So when that little screen pops up and says, you know, this app would like to request permissions for push notifications and you get to say yay or nay, that then releases a device token to the operating system on the phone. And this is what the OS uh, PNS uses to basically broadcast that notification down is the device token for the phone. Now the chances are, um, after getting that install of the app, you're gonna wanna put some kind of SDK into your app to take that device token, send it back to a cloud system, to, you know, so you can basically send these campaigns out with ease and if you really wanna power it up. So that could be a Pulsate or it could be something else. 
and you would install this in your app, which then tracks the token, brings it up to Pulsate, meaning that at a later date, you can design your push notifications with a content management system, and you can also do your segmentation, design a card, a deep link, or send maybe people to a URL. So when you're up here and you're designing all of this, this service will take care of telling the OS PNS what device tokens you would like to broadcast to, what that's gonna look like, is it gonna be interactive, is it gonna have emojis, is it gonna deep link, is it gonna go to a web URL, and what the goal is. So when people get that notification, if they do something later in your app experience, do you deem that as being successful? So there's a great advantage to using a system and using an SDK rather than trying to build all this stuff yourself. Trust me, it's quite involved and a lot of time and money um, can go into it. So uh, I'll leave you with five of my top benefits and the reasons I think your business should invest in push notifications. First of all, they're real time, they're fast, they're interactive. You can engage people as they walk by your business. We're gonna discuss location marketing um, in later videos. You can also prevent churn and increase engagement within the app. If a user hasn't been seen in a while, maybe they've had two sessions, so they've activated in your app, but they just haven't been seen in like a couple of days, so they're really at risk of churning and slipping away. So you might give them a helpful poke with a push notification and let them know that they still have 10% off their first order if they act now and add their credit card and hit a success milestone in the app um, earlier. You can also do a lot of mobile marketing automation as well. So uh, based on various parts of the life cycle, segmenting again based on age or interests, but remembering to bring in some personalization tags here and segment, 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 um, down to uh, as low an audience as possible. And also, you know, I, I did mention this earlier, but if you can leverage location as part of push notifications, I mean, it's amazing what it can do when your notifications are more contextual. We see on average, I think a 30% open rate for push notifications for, for, uh, for one of our, our clients in the retail sector. And when they use uh, geofencing, that goes up to 60% open rate. So it doubles the open rate of push notifications when they're location bound, when they're contextual. And we've seen as much as a 90% open rate with an iBeacon, which is, that's just crazy. Now for all of the power marketers out there as well, you may want to do some A-B testing. So rather than just one push notification and putting all your eggs in one basket, you might want to create a version A and a version B and allow the system, again, this comes back to having a good mobile marketing system, um, allowing it to evenly distribute the pushes and then when it finds a winner, sending to the majority of the audience the most effective push notification. And what I mean by the most effective push notification is the one that achieves the goal in the app. Whether that's opening the app, having a session, adding a credit card, completing a transaction. As I said before, your own app is unique and the events that you tag in the app are unique as well. So you need to define a goal based on your own business, based on your own app and the campaign type you're sending. So that's it for this video on getting started with push notifications, the basics and everything you should need to know. Uh, look out for my next video on the buyer's guide to push notifications. Everything that you need to consider when you're hiring a company in and a platform to do these pushes for you. So looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. I'm Patrick Letty. See you, ne see you next time. Take care.